says here that the next time the chimes go, Matt and Cher are going to be talking. So just just be be prepared. Um, well, I want to welcome all of you um, on this great, absolutely great Chautauqua weekend. And I can't imagine a more appropriate event to kick off the 4th of July festivities at Chautauqua than this celebration today. Um, indeed, uh, I think that no words can uh, replace what has been happening here for the last 15 minutes or half an hour to indicate um, the absolute uh, success uh, of what folks have invested in here for the children of Chautauqua and their parents. Um, to, to see people enjoying this area as they just have um, truly, truly is the important message that we should take away uh, from uh, what, has been, what has been done here. As you know, uh, sometimes at Chautauqua, it takes a long time for things to happen. And this, this is one of them that has um, been nurtured over many years, many conversations. But most importantly, I hope in the Chautauqua spirit, uh, a sense of family, friendship, community, coming together, rallying on behalf of um, people who are hurting, people who are in need, um, and trying to figure out how they might help in difficult times. And uh, this is what the friends of Mark and Ann have done. Um, this is what their family has done. This is what the community has done. And it is truly a fantastic pleasure to be able to finally, after all these years, uh, bring this to fruition and this morning to celebrate it. We're going to start today's uh, program uh, with Betsy Burgesson, who's going to talk a little. Well, I don't actually have a clue what Betsy's going to talk about, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping that she's going to tell you a little bit about how the objects that you find here in Timothy's play area uh, arrived here and the work that went into it. Um, by her magnificent, magnificent crew. So Betsy, would you come up? Thank you, Jeff. Now let me just switch up my speech a little bit. <laughs> uh, they say everything happens for a reason, both good and bad, happy and sad. This idea is a very hard one to believe in when you lose a loved one, especially one as young as Timothy was. Yet here we are today, we're surrounded by friends and family, colleagues, strangers, visitors, our community. And we're giving, giving Timothy's spirit a home and a life once again as we dedicate this incredible new play area. It has been such an honor to be able to work with Anne and Mark and their family creating a space not only that they would love but to be able to give so many other kids the happiness and joy and the laughter that Timothy brought to their lives I got goosebumps not just because of the wind but coming down when I saw all the kids playing on it it's it's a really moving experience Anne wrote an beautiful poem that is inscribed on the memorial plaque and the last line is fitting not only because of the memory but because of the materials that were used to create the play area the line says now you call us here to laugh play and live once more as you know 
a couple of trees have had to be cut down throughout the institution. However, their removal has not gone in vain. In fact, they found new life again. A tree from the amp that was removed has become a log tunnel that the kids and even big kids can crawl through. Uh, we've got a race car created from one of the trees that came out of Miller Park a few years ago. We have ash trees, we have locust trees that became log steppers. We have uh, the benches were trees that were removed from the University Beach hillside. The trees that we are removing are not going, they're not going in vain. We are using them and giving them life once again. And they are becoming the source of, the, of children's squeals and memories that are made. John Stowe, one of our full-time grounds crew, brought dreams to reality through his chainsaw and woodworking skills. Kudos to you, John. <laughs> I have to say, it, it's a, an awesome feeling and one that's humbling to see some doodles that you kind of jot down on paper and you put in front and say, is this what you're looking for? Because I really hope I'm on the same page as you when I'm talking with Mark and Ann and to know that we were able to create something that they had wanted and that's what their vision was. Uh, it, to see those doodles take form and know that we have made Timothy's Playground the space that Mark and Ann and all of Timothy's brothers hoped it would be is just awesome. They say everything happens for a reason. This playground, the fact that it looks like it was always meant to be here, the happiness I have seen in just the past week since its installation, the laughter I've heard filling the air as I've worked down here is proof of that. You call us here to live, to laugh, play, and live once more. Thank you. Thank you, Betsy. Thank you, John. Um, appreciate it very much. Now I'd like to call on uh, Sheriff Babcock and Matt Ewalt, who oversee our uh, education and youth programs, to talk a little bit about uh, the importance of, of this new play area uh, to Chautauqua Institution. Sheriff, Matt. We couldn't decide which one of us could speak to the meaning of this playground, so we decided that both of us would. And what I want to talk about is roots. Um, every child needs roots um, in order to thrive. And one of the things that is such a pleasure to me at Chautauqua is watching the children who come back every year to see each other because their families know and love each other. They might be brothers, they might be cousins, they might be friends. They're from all over the country, and I think this playground gives us a, a real visible symbol of the roots that we provide our children. So thank you to those of you. I know there are many who made this a reality, and thank you um, to, um, but especially to the Rotaco family. And good luck, cheese balls, team taco, and fireballs. Did I leave anybody out? I'm sorry, green pops? Of course. Okay. I, I haven't seen that. So this is a wonderful day, and we thank you for it. Good morning, everyone. I am going to adjust this a little bit. That's all right. Um, you know, it's most appropriate that we gather on this, this weekend, uh, a weekend for families to gather all over the country, but even here at Chautauqua a weekend for, for those who can't be here an entire week, let alone multiple ones who come for uh, a few days to return to this community and spend time with those they love. 
to see their child march in the children's school parade or pop paper bags uh, with their family at Monday evening's CSO Pops concert in the amphitheater. Uh, for those of you new to, uh, new to Chautauqua, um, and there may be a few here, <laughs> uh, the demographics of this place have changed. Uh, while many of you here are indeed uh, here for multiple weeks or perhaps the entire summer, uh, the one week visit is now the most uh, common one at, at Chautauqua. That trend of a shorter va uh, family vacation is also ref reflected nationally. On average, we're simply taking less and less uh, vacation time. And it's not that we necessarily have less time for vacation, it's that we don't find the time to take it. Um, here in, in this grove with uh, just a reminder of the origins of, of this place, I just find myself thinking about the history of Chautauqua and the idea uh, in the late 19th century of our learning as a community how to use our discretionary time. Uh, you know, with that free time afforded us, how do we, how do we use it? And it's, it's about time, finding time for oneself and dedicating ourselves to exploration and learning and renewal, but it's also about finding time for each other. Uh, I almost think we're at uh, another crisis of discretionary time where even when we do end up taking vacation, uh, now with cell phones and everything else, we're so easily connected to our responsibilities back home that we find ourselves distracted and not in the moment. Um, it's not always about, uh, about the plan. That's a hard thing to say in a place where uh, uh, our vacation guide is the hundreds of events printed on the back of the daily that we rush to uh, back and forth. But there are reminders of the spontaneous and being in the moment. Um, we can find it uh, at Bester Plaza at 7 p.m., uh, not a coincidence, in between programs when families all done with dinner and before something happening in the amphitheater are gathering and playing with their children and talking with one another. Um, I think for me what's most striking about Timothy's Playground is that this is something that families walking uh, the grounds perhaps for the first time with their children or perhaps for the hundredth or two hundredth time are discovering something they weren't expecting, perhaps altering their schedule to spend a few minutes with each other and enjoying that moment. Um, I'm so incredibly grateful to Mark and Anne and the family and this larger family gathering here uh, in this grove that again is, has seen the entire history of this place uh, this community, your gift is a commitment to our future and of the moments families spend together, both great and small. Um, and out of loss, helping families uh, laugh, play, and live and find those moments. Thank you so much. I'm going to readjust this. And now um, we're going to ask Mark and Ann to come up and um, say um, a few things. I'm sure that are deep in their heart and have been there for a, a long time. Um, but before they do, I just want to express um, my real gratitude to them for their tenaciousness, um, their uh, good spirit in all of this, um, that even perhaps when it felt like, you know, why are they saying no all the time, um, that somehow or another we got to yes. And I'm really... Dang, you guys didn't talk long enough. <laughs> You know how much time you have. <laughs> so I don't know what I was saying, but here's Market Ed. Good morning, everybody. We did it. Not only did we manage to get the playground built, we actually are having an event where there are no children on this 
for the next 20, 15 minutes. You know, this is the embodiment of all that's right about Chautauqua, this playground, the play area. It's about a community of all of you that were really instrumental in getting two people, Ann and I, back on our feet when we were devastated with the loss of our son in 2004. And for you to be able to embrace us spiritually, uh, emotionally, and even financially uh, has really meant the world to us and, and ultimately uh, provided that sort of clarity for us that said, you know, we're here to support you. It's going to be okay. Well, I thought I would just tell you a little bit about, um, about our journey. And when Timothy passed away in 2004, um, he was 16 months old and Mark and I were 31. And um, we, we died a little bit at that moment too. Um, and um, my mom, where are you mom? Um, introduced me uh, to a really incredible woman, one of those just wise people that God drops into your life at the right moment. And her name was um, Clarissa Pincora Estes. And she's all that you would think she was. She was um, probably in her 70s at the time and she spoke in a very soft voice. And she knew a lot about grief. And she said to me, she took, took me by my hands and she said, this is really going to be hard. And, um, and when you lose somebody, um, and especially when you lose a child, you get a hole in your heart. And it's not a hole that you can actually fill, she said. And it's not a, bro a break that you can fix. And so what you need to do for the rest of your life and what I ask you and Mark to do is to fiercely and relentlessly seek joy. Seek the people who make you joyful and the places that give you joy and the experiences that give you joy. And that those things grow your heart. And one of the miracles that God gives you is a heart that grows. And she said, it's going to take a long time. <laughs> and, um, and she said, and so... Just in, know that and know that there are going to be these moments that are going to happen in your life where you're going to start to love again and you're going to start to live again. And they're going to surprise you at first and they're going to be few and far between. And then there are going to be more and more of them. And Timothy passed away in November and in July of the next summer we came here and we stepped onto the basketball court. And that was one of the very first moments that we we were able to sort of know that that was going to happen. And, and then we came back and every year, um, that happened for us here. And then we came on Saturday here and we got in at like 10 30 at night, um, with a carload of kids, my four boys and our niece, Isa. And the first thing they wanted to do was come down to the playground. So we turned on our flashlights on our phone and we got to see them play on this playground. And that was one of those moments. Um, and today is one of those moments. And we are, I mean, if my heart could like pop out of my chest and balance out that hole it has, and you guys have given us all of those moments. And we are so grateful. We are so grateful. It makes us better people and better parents and hopefully better friends and family to you guys along the way. So, thank you. Jeff and Betsy and, and uh, Sharon and Matt highlight a, a number of themes. Um, there are three things I just wanted to sort of let you know that we're certainly acutely aware of and certainly grateful for. Um, the first is this hollowed place. Of all the places in the institution, there, I can't think of one more sacred to the entire grounds. And uh, for the generations that have come before us and for some of the things that Matt articulated and, and, and Betsy and for the generations to come, we're all custodians of this place. So to do this and to have it be in the right spirit of things uh, is really, really important. And it was first and foremost. The other thing that Ann and I really were certainly grateful for was the administration uh, and for all of your help and support. You know, and I we came a couple of times in the off season to make sure that everything would be on schedule and there were a lot of no's but we got a lot of yeses and we kept things moving forward 
And I remember, John, we came into your office and I met with both of you. And um, wow, something you said, you said, you know, we come down and just sit on the bench when nothing was out here. And we just look and we stop and think, we got to get this right. We've got to get this area right. And you got it right. And yeah. as the custodians, you guys are the year round custodians for all of us. And you were a phenomenal team to work with. And so really a heartfelt thank you. And I do want to recognize a, a few people in particular. Um, and John, I know you already got some shout out for um, all of your great work, but I do want to uh, recognize uh, a, a few people. I, I do want to thank the Board of Trustees. Uh, I don't know if Greg Miller is here. Greg was a very supportive, certainly as was the rest of the board with the process and really was um, instrumental in moving this forward. Uh, as well, I, Jeff and the Chautauqua Foundation have been fantastic. And last but certainly not least is John and the operations team. So Betsy, you and John, thank you. John Shedd and Betsy Burgesson, thank you. Uh, and the other folks, so John Stowe we talked about, so thank you for your help. Chris Majewski, is Chris here? Is anyone else here? I'm not sure if they are. Chris Majewski, Chuck Rugg, Andrew Stroth, Jamin Robbins, and Jack Manella. Phenomenal, phenomenal work putting this together. And so a sincere, a sincere thank you to all of you. Okay, I'm, I'm trying really hard not to cry anymore. But we um, we couldn't have done this without you. There are a few people here that, um, that you know, I look around, everybody here has played a huge part. Um, uh, I'm looking at two guys right here. Raise your hands, Stephen, <laughs> Stephen, Nick, um, back in 2005, who started the first tournament. Um, a couple guys, we were counselors with you. Mark played softball with you, and um, you found a way for people to to express their love to us and and kick this off. And we gave um, some money initially to um, Sandhoff's research and to support the families, in particular, of people who have children um, who have one of these rare um, lysosomal storage disorders. And so that was amazing. Um, and then uh, we had this group of people who came behind it and said, you know, we're getting a little too old for basketball. We have a few twisted knees. We've had some hamstring pulls. We probably ought to um, let our kids play. So let's do kickball. And so um, we got kickball started. But even more than that, um, kudos to um, Melissa Roberts, Tannery, and Susie Streeter, Davis and um, Melissa Streeter V, um, and Katie Prechtel Cook and Katie Schaefer Stecker. Um, <laughs> there, we've got a lot of Melissas and Katies in these groups, but um, who came together and really helped us, um, and, and Andy, your spouses too, um, said, let's do something where we can have something in, in Chautauqua. And this was your idea, and um, what an idea. So um, thank you guys. So. Thank you guys so much. You've been amazing. And showing up in force in bright orange t-shirts and <laughs> embracing cheese balls um, has been amazing. We also have to thank the Prechtel family, um, in particular, whether it's been basketball or kickball. Um, Coach, you and, and Linda have been unbelievable to us. Um, and I don't know, from bases to being our resident photographer and making origami butterflies and all kinds of stuff. Um, thank you very much. For all of that work. Um, the Yelazowitzes, the Zellers, um, gosh, I'm looking at my brother-in-law and sister-in-law over here. Paul, you've been remarkable, and you've brought your group of friends to play, and they play hard, these people from Texas. <laughs> the Springers and the Olivers <laughs> are a force to be reckoned with, um, so we have appreciated you so much. Mark and I both had a chance to work at club. Mark went there, obviously, for a number of years longer than I did, but we had a set of groupers that um, were all Mark's groupers for a few years, and then I had the pleasure of having them in SAC, and um, they travel in packs. That's how you know them. There are about four, I don't know, 40 of them now since they've all gotten married, and anytime you see a group, they're sort of the pinnacle of Chautauqua friendships, and they have shown up um, for us, and so thank you guys. Um, and, and you just see generations of people who are a few years older and a few years younger, and... Um, Maybe a few who gave us their fake IDs to get into bars one time. <laughs> Things like that. But, um, but really, all of you generations have come together. Um, and then our families. And um, to Paul and Joanne, thank you for finding Chautauqua when Mark was 10. And thank you for making me a part of this. Um, and and uh, we just love all of you very, very much. And um, 
and to beyond Chautauqua, Chautauqua has tentacles out into the world, and many of them are in Denver, where my family is, and a few of those people are here today, and I'm so happy to have you here. Um, welcome to my other home <laughs> again. And then we have, um, my French family is here today too, and I'll say just one thing in French that you all know, which is, je vous aime énormément. <laughs> um, so th thank you all for, for coming. I want to say one other thing. Um, we didn't talk about this part, but this guy... Um, has been amazing. And when Timothy was diagnosed, one day I came home a few days later from the grocery store and I walked in the back door and, um, you just sort of in a fog and there were these candles that were placed all along sort of through the kitchen and the dining room and the, and into the living room. And there was a whiteboard at the end of it. Um, and it said, keep believing on the whiteboard. And we still have that whiteboard in our house. And anybody who knows Mark knows that it is not about hope as much as it's about fierce determination for him. Um, and I, I just want to say thanks for keeping our family together. I love you. Well, you know who the rock is in the family. <laughs> it's not me. The crying rock. So I want to say thank you to you as well, Anne, for everything and for being on this journey together. And um, it's just meant the world to me to be able to see so much of your vision and your beautiful poem and everything come together. So love you as well. And so let's wrap this up because yep. it's going to ring in about 10, 9, 8. As I, Thank as you. As I get up here. Oh. I know what this is. This is the license plate that will go on the car. Oh my gosh. Wow. Um, what a uh, what a perfect uh, celebration, dedication, coming together. If this doesn't epitomize the very best of Chautauqua, I don't know what else could. Uh, photographers, get ready. We're going to cut a ribbon. Um, so I'm going to ask Mark and Ann and their family. Um, uh, we have some special scissors, depending on your age. I know which one Mark is going to get. Um, and so we're going to cut the ribbon, and then we hope to see this playground f full of young people and not-so-young people uh, playing, having fun, laughing, living. And... Um, we also have, if there are any left, if the uh, young people haven't devoured them all already, we have some goodies over on the table and some beverages, morning beverages, people, morning beverages. Um, but uh, let's let's cut the ribbon and uh, and op officially open Timothy's playground. On three, one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> I think pretty much.
pretty much if your helmet is missing, Harper has it. <laughs> They wanted to go, go, go. So I let them each do a T and then they were gone. So I did the M and the R. <laughs> Kids have a lot of fun. Boy, that was such a far-sighted gift for your family. We're lucky that uh, we had, you know, two people, Mark and Ann, who really were able to have such a strong faith and imagination. We're very blessed to have them. Yeah. It's a magnificent talk. This is my apprentice, Justin. Justin. I get up there, we have videos. Yeah.